Hi guys, it's Rita from Picked and Polished, where I love to help you create beautiful things for your home and your business on a budget. And tonight we're gonna to be doing, the well, the whole month of May, we're focusing on patina finishes with Dixie Belle Paint Patina Line. So tonight I've got a really super cool project. I shared the behind the scenes design process on my page earlier today in a recorded video. Oh my gosh, a big moth just flew into my shop. Hold on guys, I gotta close the door. <laughs> I thought it was a bat, but it was a moth. Hold on a second. Okay. So um, I had the door open because it's finally spring here in New Hampshire and the peepers were making their beautiful sound in the backyard. So I thought that would be a good idea, but moths are big here. And so I closed the door. All right, so if you see one land on my face, let me know. Um, so I did the behind the scenes video of the design process of the stencil. I'm gonna kind of walk you through this tonight and we're gonna be combining a super cool design on a piece of painted wood. This is just a piece of pa painted pine. I use Dixie Belle Savannah Mist as a base coat. And anytime we are doing um, patina, you always wanna start with a base coat of really any color paint is fine. Um, and then I'll walk you through the process. But also I posted above, in case you haven't heard the bagillion announcements I've been making. We have less than 40 spots left now in our DIY decor makers group because we only opened it like Thursday, like emails went out, um, Wednesday night. So since Thursday, we've had quite a few people sign up. So make sure you hop in before the doors close on May um, 13th, which is Monday. It may close before then if we get like a lot more people because every single day we get a, a bunch more people that sign up for the group. And you get the founding members price of $17 a month, which stays the same the life of your membership. Um, and you get access to a bunch of stuff. So when we're done with the live, go check out the link. Jason's gonna be putting that, posting that in the feed. All right, so we're gonna get right to it tonight. Um, I use 631 stencil vinyl and I cut out this design. I did something similar to my kitchen and um, kitchen floors. Um, and I thought it would be fun because I have seen um, all over the place, I'm seeing these beautiful, almost like barn quilt, um, barn quilt, pattern sort of signs, but with like a, a modern farmhouse twist. And so I thought we'd give that a try tonight, but I also thought we would do it with patina. So I'm gonna show you how I weed this out really quickly. I'm just gonna walk through the process with you. Um, and then we'll start the patina process after that. So let me know you guys if you can't see what I'm doing. So normally I use a tool, but I can't seem to find it anywhere. You guys know that I leave my stuff everywhere. So I'm just going to use my fingers to pull out the, um, the extra vinyl. And this is how I'm going to make the stencil. If I wanted to do a paint resist, I would pull off all the extra or a decal. I would pull off all the extra vinyl and leave the meat and potatoes of the design on there. Okay, but because I'm doing a stencil, I want my paint to be where the design is. So kind of how I think about it, to help my brain focus on what I need to pull off and what I need to leave on. So I'm just gonna keep pulling, um, pulling this off. So you guys can kind of see the whole process. Now some of you might already be really familiar with this and that's okay. But others of you that are, might be a little bit more intimidated by it, I just wanted to show you how simple it is. So I threw this through my Cricut cutter um, and I walked you through the process earlier. I have a video posted. Um, so definitely, definitely pass this video along if you think, you know, some other people might be crafty and wanting to learn some of these things too. So say hi if you're with me tonight and let me know where you're watching from. Hey, Marsha. Hi, Becky. Hi, Lori and Donna. I've got so many amazing ladies, you guys, already in the group. Um, over 60, I think now, and that is just super exciting because we're going to be doing some really fun stuff um, and we have a lot of great resources in that group already. Um, and everybody's already getting acquainted and chatting and starting our group challenge. So that's really fun too. So if you've joined the group on my website, but you haven't requested to join the Facebook group yet, Make sure you do that because you don't want to miss out on all the fun that we're going to have in there too. All right. 
So here's my design. This is pretty, right? Um, and this is where my paint is going to go. Whoops. Hold on. I just did something funky. All right. So this is the where you see the white is where I'm going to end up painting. All right. I'm just going to lift my. All right. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Danielle. Um, and now I'm going to go ahead and just cover my design with, I use a paper medium tack paper transfer tape. It's in my Amazon shop and I include this in the clickable link supply list for every single project I do in the DIY Decor Makers group. You have an easy to access um, supply list that goes along with it. So let me grab my scissors. Um, and this is just, so the kind of transfer paper you use or transfer tape you use does matter with the type of vinyl that you use. So depending on what you're trying to do, whether it's, you know, an iron on or um, some sort of a decal, you know, you have to, right? Lori, it is the best. It's so easy to use. I've used a lot of different transfer tapes and a lot of different vinyls for my sign workshops. And I've cranked out a ton of signs. I used to do probably 40 signs in, I don't know, a couple weeks easily. Um, and so, and so um, this transfer tape has been really, really easy to use for my customers that are doing workshops with me and for myself when I'm doing custom, when I was doing custom orders. So now I'm just going to try to make it so you guys can see it so I'm not in front of the camera. So I'm just going to kind of let it sag a little bit. It's almost like parchment paper, but it's not waxy. Kind of line it up on the edges and then roll it out a little bit. Okay. Try not to get bubbles, but if I do, it's not the end of the world. And sometimes if you don't have like a lot of little letters, you can lift that up and um, replace it. But usually once it's stuck down, it's pretty stuck. So I'm going to go ahead and just trim this off. And then I'm going to go back and kind of even that out a little bit. So this back part is the grid. And I'm going to look and see where my design hits. And then I'm going to cut... You know, I don't want to cut super close to my stencil because then I won't have any wiggle room for where my paintbrush goes, right? So I'm going to give myself a little bit of room. This side's a little less, looks like I have a little less room. I'm just going to cut along. And you guys also know that scissors are not my friend. All my scissors cut crooked. I don't have a pair of good scissors. Okay. There we go. I'm just going to cut along the lines. It's lucky I have these easy to cut lines because I'm not a straight scissor cutter. And I'm just going to check it over. And now this is ready. If I want to do a paint party with these or I want to do my own decor or whatever, this is ready to go. It's a one-time use though. And I do teach people how to make reusable stencils in the DIY decor makers group. There's a video on how to do both. So either way. Um, so yes, this is removable. This is 631 sticky vinyl. Um, and I can, if you go to my Amazon shop, Picked and Polished with Rita, everything is in there, but I can put the link in at some point tonight after I'm done. If you guys have questions, let me know, okay? And I'll go back. If I don't see them tonight, I'll go back and answer. Hi, Susie. Hi, Danielle. Um, so I hope that helps. So now I'm just going to kind of rub. I always say we're going to give this stencil some love for a second here. Make sure everything's pushed down. Um, and then we're going to move our board over. See if I cut this the right size. Ooh, it's going to be close, you guys. It's going to be super duper close. It's going to be over, actually. But actually, you know what might be kind of cool? I'm almost wondering if I do like a half. If I cut this in half, I'm going to cut the stencil in half, actually, because I cut, I didn't, when I measured, I think I was thinking I would use a 1 by 12, and I think I measured wrong, but that's okay. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and do like a half stencil on this side and see how it comes out, all right? So you can cut these once they're made. It's not a big deal. Because um, these together would sit over the edge. Let me just see. Yes. So my board, my board is too short, which sometimes it happens. It's not the end of the world. You can get creative and sometimes there's a happy accident that happens in the process. So I'm going to go ahead and do my thing here and then maybe do, I'll do some blending and some waxing up here. So it won't take up the whole board. You guys will be able to see the contrast a little better. So I'm going to go ahead and just flip this over. 
and just a second. Here we go. All right, flip it over and then I'm gonna peel this back. Right, and then my job is to just get everything off that backing, right? And I can toss that backing now. I don't know, do I wanna do it here? I think I'm gonna do it the long way and I'm gonna put it right along the edge there. All right, so I've got my stencil. So now it's sticky side down. This is sticky and the transfer tape is sticky. And the reason why it's called transfer tape is it transfers your stencil from the backing to the board. So that's how you can kind of think about it. Oh, Nancy, that's a good idea. I should have done that. Quartered it and put it on opposing quarter corners. That would have been super cool. So there's a lot of ways you can do, like in the Cricut Access subscription, they have tons of different tile files, images where you can like, you know, you can cut them, you can move them in different ways. Um, I used one similar to this on my tile floor and loved it. I didn't use a sticky vinyl for that. I used a reusable vinyl, I mean a reusable stencil made out of um, six mil mylar because it was more durable and I could just keep reusing it because it would take me forever to prep all that. So now I'm just gonna peel back the tape. See how that little piece kind of pulled up a little bit? I'm not gonna worry about it. I'm just gonna push it back down. And whoops, see how that one's coming up a little bit too? So I'm gonna push these down, make sure they stay down. Put some pressure. The biggest thing I think people forget to do is they forget to put pressure on the tape as they're peeling back. And that'll help hold your stuff. You can reuse this if you want to, but for me, it's like, where am I gonna put it in the meantime? Um, but you could just stick it off to the side and reuse it on your next, if you know you're gonna be doing a similar stencil, um, and you could just reuse the tape, the transfer tape. So I wonder, I didn't even check to see if this was centered, but we're just gonna give it a go. All right, so I'm gonna be using strictly the bronze patina tonight. And like I said, I always start with a base coat of the, um, I always start with a base coat, hey Mara, of the um, chalk mineral paint. And then I'm gonna go over it with the um, patina paint. And then we're gonna dry it really quickly. So I shook this up really, really good before I started. If you wanna let this have some texture, you can. If you want some of the back color to show through, you can. It's like totally up to you. You wanna make sure that all of your vinyl is kind of stuck down really nicely because anywhere there's like a bubble or it's lifted up is where the paint's gonna find its way underneath. But I always recommend using the Dixie Bell chalk paint with the stencils because it's thicker and it won't bleed like, a, like an acrylic might. So I'm just gonna go ahead and dab this on. I want it to have a little bit of texture um, you can either brush it on, you can dab it on. The last tutorial I did, I brushed it on. So now I'm gonna show you how it might look a little different. Um, if you use the iron patina, which we'll get to this month, is how you create the rust finish. That doesn't cover as heavily as the bronze and the copper, but it makes an amazing, truly rusted finish. So. So that's gonna be good for now. I'm just gonna quickly show you guys and then I'm gonna throw it under the dryer. All right, so there's that. That's the bronze. It's a little bit darker and deeper than the, um, than the copper. The copper's a little bit brighter. And I'm gonna be using both the blue and the green spray. So these little bottles, for those of you that do workshops, these little bottles are great for workshops for separating out your patina. Um, but this is the bottle that they come in when you order, okay? Um, and I also use these containers for workshops, but if you're gonna do that, you need to make sure that you clean the edges every single time before you close them because otherwise you won't get a good seal and your patina will get kind of clumpy. You can still use it, but it won't be as um, fresh and new as if you took the time to kind of clean under the lids and around the edges so that you get a good, you get it closed well. All right. So there's that. I'm gonna just throw this under the hairdryer for a quick second and then we'll get going with the next layer. So with the patina, you do your base coat of paint, your patina metallic paint, whether it's copper, bronze, or iron. You let that dry, you do your second coat and while the second coat is wet is when you spray it, okay? And that's when you get the activation um, happening. All right, so I'm just gonna quickly dry this.
I'm trying not to get it too hot. I don't want to melt the plastic from the vinyl. It's going to get it kind of dry in the cup. Okay, see how quick that is? So that layer is dry, and then I'm gonna go over with my second layer, and before it dries, I'm gonna go ahead and spray it with my patina sprays. All right, so if you're working with a big area, if I were doing this on like the side of a dresser, which I have done before, um, I would do it section, spray section by section. You can also dab, like I'll be using some tissues tonight. If I had a sponge handy, I would probably be using a sponge because if I was prepared, I would have had a sponge out here. But I'm going to use a tissue to kind of dab the dab the paint a little bit. So this first layer is going to kind of seal down your stencil, which is good. Um, and if you're really worried about the this liquid bleeding underneath, this layer of um, you could actually do some sealing. But I think when I've done it before, I've just gone ahead and and painted, and it's been fine. So it's really like if you want to try sealing it, you could. But I think as long as you're kind of thoughtful about how, you know, where the spray is going. I wouldn't like lift it up too much. So we're gonna just do this little section here, one section at a time. I'm gonna spray some of the green spray and then spray some of the blue spray. Just kind of get it all over. If I was worried about getting any on here, I could tape this off. Um, but I think, you know what, if I get a little on there, I can always paint over it or maybe it'll add to the charm of it. This is a little bit. This has been sitting for a while, so. Okay, so I'm just gonna do a little bit of the blue, and then I'm gonna keep cruising. You don't need a little bit of patina, it goes a long way, you guys, trust me. You can use a jar of patina on a billion different projects. Um, thrift store finds or whatever, you can make look so amazing with this. And if you think about projects when you go to the thrift store, if you look at the lines of things instead of the outdated finish of something, pay attention to what the lines look like, the shape and the size, because that's what's going to come to life when you repaint it or put patina on it. Um, because the finish can be changed very easily with these products. So I'm going to go ahead and do some spots that I really miss. I'm just going to make sure. So I'm going to go ahead and spray with the green. Let me get it sprayed and spray with the blue. And then I'm just going to kind of dab it a little bit to kind of even it out. You can dab this stuff. You'll get a different look if you even it out than if you just leave it. Um, you know, it's just fun to play with. You don't know, you can't always control it. Um, there are some different strategies you can use to get different looks, but in the end, the patina is going to do what the patina wants to do, right? And that's part of the fun for me anyway. Okay. So now I'm going to do a little bit of hair drawing so you can kind of see how it's coming out. But you see that right there? And then I will take a peek underneath the edge and we'll do the full reveal tomorrow. I'll post a picture of how it looks. All right, so. Starting to change color a little bit. So somebody just posted the question, do you leave the stencil on overnight? You could, um, if you're worried about, like if it's not totally dry and you're worried about drippies, um, because it's gonna get the best seal if you leave it that way. But for today's purposes, let's just go ahead and peel it and see what happens. Throw me some hearts if you guys are ready to see it peeled. We'll take our chances tonight since we're live. But if you have like big pools of patina, those pools are gonna kind of spill out to your board when you're pulling up your vinyl. So you may wanna just leave it 
let it dry overnight, and then come back to it in the morning and peel your vinyl off. And you can always touch it up a little bit. Ooh la la, okay. Let's see. So I've got a little bit of that right there, but for the most part, my lines are really clean. And I can always go around the edge with some Savannah Mist. And I might do some dark wax. I mean, who knows? The possibilities are endless. So you could already see, you guys, the patina's already turning. Can you see that? Look how pretty that is. I don't know if you could, I feel like the light, my ring light tonight is kind of, let me mess with my light a little bit. Yeah, it's hard to see with this, but tomorrow I will post a picture and you'll see that it's like all different, all different shades. It's like got blues and greens and some of that bronze peeking through. Um, let me do a little bit more of the dryer. Keep in mind with this too, if you've got little pools of patina on here and you hit it with the dryer, it could push the, the, the liquid off. So just kind of keep that in mind. And I'm not gonna overheat it because it could cause the paint to get funky. Ah, there we go. Can you guys see that changing? There it goes, look at that. Ooh. Oh, what? Hold on. I've got some vinyl I still need to pull. There we go. It's changing now, you guys. Already starting to change color. Can you guys see it now? Isn't that like magic? I swear, it's amazing. Yeah, right? So um, it, it's gonna continue to do its patina thing overnight. And then tomorrow I can either just seal, if I don't want any of this to like smear onto the board, I can go with a craft brush and kind of seal that on its own. Um, I might do some stuff with wax. I don't know what I'm gonna do with this yet, but it's super cool the way it looks. Look at that already and I just started the patina process. This is gonna take some time to turn. I can tell that's still pretty dark down here. Um, and you can see like this is really, really green right now. It'll tone down a little bit as it dries. Um, but the possibilities with these stencils and patina are really like endless. So um, I'll play around with this board a little bit tomorrow. I'll post, I will definitely be posting what the final um, patina ends up looking like. Yeah, because you can see now that it's turning what it's looking like. Um, and if you guys are interested or you have questions about the DIY Decor Makers group, shoot me a message. Check out the link that Jason has been posting. No problem, Danielle. Thank you for watching. Um, because the doors will close May 13th or sooner, depending on how many signups we get. The spots are filling up fast, you guys. People are, it's filling up way faster than I ever expected. So thank you, thank you. We've got an amazing group of women in there doing amazing things. A lot of people from my cricket class jumped into the group um, and they're just killing it with their projects. And I can't wait to share some of those with you guys as the week progresses. I'll be kind of putting some more information out there of what um, some of my customer experiences have been in the last class that I have. And um Oh, pegs on the bottom, that's a great idea, yes. Um, but I'll be sharing more as the week goes on about you know all the different things people are doing. Uh, I'm just really proud of some of the things that ladies in my Cricut class have done, and I can't wait to see what everybody does in the DIY Decor Makers group as the group evolves um, and changes and people you know have new and exciting ideas. And uh, it's just a great community to create and encourage one another. So if you haven't hopped in yet, Definitely let me know. Oh, Jane, I'm so glad you're coming to the boot camp. Yes. Yes, it's going to be so fun. And if you're in the DIY Decor Makers group this month, you get 20% off patina, Dixie Bell patina, and um, you get 25% off of any of my in-person or online workshops in the future. So, Jane, if you decide to join the DIY Makers group, let me know, and I can credit you that 25% too. So, 
Um, you guys have a wonderful night. I'll be going live every night this week, so I'll see you guys tomorrow night, right around 8, 8.30, okay? Bye.